So I had this experience about two months ago that I think was really life-changing for me. And it all started when I had to pick up a rental car from the rental car place because we had some friends coming in from out of town. So I went to the rental car place about 30 minutes before I had to pick them up and they had given away my car. So they called another office and tried to get another minivan brought down to us. And so we were waiting uh, by the door and when it pulled up, the rental car attendant comes out and he says, hey, this is your car, go ahead and, and go, we're so sorry. And so I said, oh, it's okay. And I jumped in the car and I took off and it was all good until the next day. Uh, I was flying out the next morning at 8.28 a.m. and uh, when I got to TSA, they had to see my boarding pass, of course, and my driver's license. And uh, when I pulled out my wallet, I realized that my license wasn't there. And I started retracing my steps back and I realized that in all the commotion from the day before, when I went to pick up the rental car and it wasn't there, that both the attendant that was helping me and myself forgot the license. I called my wife who uh, had dropped me off at the airport and I said, hey, would you go by the office? Uh, they open at eight o'clock. If you can just run in 30 seconds, grab the license, get it back to me, I can still make my flight. And when she got there, it was about 7.55 and she said, Chris, there's nobody there. And so I called another office and, and they said, well, the manager should be there already. Um, let me call and find out for you. So finally at 8.30, um, a manager shows up, wet hair, street clothes, like they had just been called in to open up the, the place and she unlocks the door, runs in, gets the license sitting on the counter, gives it to my wife, my wife runs out, but by the time my wife gets it to me, it's 8.35, my plane has already left and so I missed my flight. So I was very frustrated and I asked the airline, is there anything you can do um, to get me on a flight um, as soon as possible? So they said, we're gonna get you on the next flight, which is 9.45 a.m., and we're gonna put you in first class because that's the only seat we have. And uh, I was really grateful for that, but at the same time, I was still pretty frustrated. I was kind of running through my head uh, what, how I was gonna to have to reschedule my morning and how that would affect the rest of the day. And as I got quiet, I, I really thought to myself, you know what, this can't be a, a coincidence. I mean, it can't be an accident that I happen to go to the rental car place and they forget to give me my car and give it away to somebody else. And that puts us in such a rush that I forget to get my license. And then that just so happens to be the morning, the next morning where the manager doesn't show up for work. That, that just can't be an accident. And so I said, God, whatever you wanna do, I'm open and I'm listening. And uh, as we took off, uh, I noticed the first class stewardess and she was smiling, she was happy, but just something drew me in her direction. And so I, I said to, to God, you know what, when we, we land the plane and when she gets off the plane, I'm going to talk to her. The plane lands and, you know, of course, I feel a little self-conscious. I don't have anything to tell her. I thought to myself for a second, Maybe it's just me. Maybe it's not God. He hasn't told me what to say, hasn't really given me any direction, but I could just feel the Holy Spirit saying, you need to talk to her. And so I waited. Finally, the stewardesses and the flight attendants and the pilot came off of the plane and she was one of them and she takes off in the other direction, the complete opposite direction. And uh, as I made my way um, around, I actually passed the escalators and I started to go down the escalator. And I started, you know, because I said, this is crazy. I mean, I feel very self-conscious about this. But once again, the Holy Spirit just said, no, this is important. You need to talk to her. I walk into the terminal and there she is in the first gate. She's waiting to get on her flight. And so I walk up to her and I tapped her on the shoulder and she turned around and I said, hey, 
Um, my name is Chris, and I'm a pastor on Maui. And I believe God put me on the plane that we were just on because I was supposed to give you a message. She starts crying, and she says, I can't believe that you're here. I can't believe that this is for real. And so I, I look at her and I say, you know, I just felt like God put me on this plane to tell you that He loves you and that He hasn't forgotten about you. And don't give up because you have a purpose for living. And she just starts bawling and she throws her arms around me and she hugs me as tight as she can. And when she finally composed herself, I, I explained to her all the crazy things that had happened to get me on that plane in that moment to talk, talk to her and how special she must be to God. She proceeds to explain to me that a few years ago, she lost her daughter. And since that time, for the last few years, she'd been praying and asking God for answers, asking God to give her a reason to go on because her daughter was everything to her. She felt like God had completely forgotten her. And she had gone out and gotten prescription pills recently and had been looking at those pills and contemplating um, just ending it. And she had told God that morning, I need you to answer me today. I need you to tell me today that you love me, that you haven't forgotten me, and that I have a reason for living and going on because I just don't feel like I can do it anymore. How crazy is it that I almost walked away multiple times and I think about how we must have those experiences every single day. And sometimes it's just a feeling. Maybe it's sitting next to that coworker and you're just going along your day and you just have this feeling that something's wrong or you hear someone talking about how bad their day is and, or, or they may just be going along life and you just have this feeling. And how we allow our own insecurities and our own fears and our own doubts to cause us to walk away or to just stay silent and how we never know how important that moment might be for someone else. I took a picture with her. I have it on my phone. I'll have it for the rest of my life as a reminder to me how important it is to not let fear or doubt to ever allow me to miss a moment to be used by God to impact someone's life because we never know how big that moment might be to them even though it seems so in insignificant to us. My name is Chris Miyake and I am a one-person movement.